Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how I blend my digital paintings and just the process I go through. And to begin with, I want to say this is not going to show you any basic theory on blending. There's plenty of videos and resources out there discussing that, so I'm going to have some of them listed down in the description if you want to check them out. This is just going to be how I personally uh, blend my paintings. And I'm going to use the program Krita to paint, but you can find equivalent brushes in any painting software and you can use this technique in any painting software, so it doesn't really matter if you're using Photoshop or Sai or anything like that. And I'm going to be blending values, so in grayscale rather than in color, because it's easier to blend in grayscale. Um, by adding colors, you just add another factor to consider, and it makes it harder since you have to also think about color theory and mixing and all of that. So if you don't really know how to blend very well, I would just recommend doing it in grayscale first and then moving on to color. And I want to say that I don't mean any of this to be um, how to mimic my style. And this is more of a simplistic example of how I blend. I digitally paint this way all the time. And so um, this technique is also applied to some of my more complex paintings. Also, the more time you spend blending a painting, the more refined and pristine it's going to look. So I spent about an hour on this painting and it turned out a little bit more textured and sketchy looking, but I am fine with that. Um, it's just supposed to show you kind of how I work. I only use two brushes for this, it's going to be a soft airbrush and an oil brush, and I'm going to talk about them in a second. But if you'd like to see which brushes I usually use for my digital paintings, you can check out my brushes video. It's going to be on the screen right now, and I'm going to explain the brushes and how I use them. Uh, lastly, I'm not going to show you how I paint hair in this, I do have a video on that which is going to be on the screen right now as well. And before I begin, I want to say thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And if you don't know what Skillshare is, it is an online learning community for creators with more than 15,000 classes in things like film and photography, um, art, writing, design, all that kind of stuff. And everybody can take a class and you can try it out, try out a project. And you can also have the creator of the class comment on your picture and maybe critique it or let you know what you did well. And you can even make a class for yourself if you want to. So premium membership starts as low as $10 a month and you can get unlimited access to all the classes. You can get the app and also watch the classes offline if you wish. And so I've been taking a lot of classes on like business and freelancing. And so they're really useful if you want to set up like a branding or shop. So if you want to try out the website, I have a link to a free two month trial code right in the description at the top of it if you want to click that. So if you want to, just try out the free two-month trial, um, try out as many classes as you want to, and form your opinion on the website. I really like it. So to get into my process, I always begin with a sketch made with a soft airbrush so that when I'm blending out the lines into the painting, I'm not dealing with any harsh lines. The edges will be easier to blend. So I don't really care about the pressure size when I'm using this brush. I usually use the default, which is with the pressure size on, and I will sketch with the airbrush. I cannot stress enough that this is kind of the thing that made the whole blending part of painting a lot more streamlined for me. It's way easier for me to blend when I have lines made with an airbrush rather than a hard line brush, since um, especially on edges like contours, such as the chin or the nose, um, it's harder to blend those out when you have hard lines. So the airbrush kind of even adds a little bit of a shadow as if it was like around a curved surface. Um, you'll see it later on when I'm painting. So once I'm done with the sketch layer, I'm going to go underneath and I'm going to add all the tones and values for the painting underneath. So all the base tones will be applied with a soft airbrush as well. And it's easier to do the actual painting when the base is relatively smooth, so that's why I use the airbrush. So a little pro tip is I always use values that are, are a little bit darker since it's easy to go back and use curves to lighten the image rather than to darken the values. I don't know, it's it's weird, but it works easier when you lighten the image rather than darken it. And a lot of uh, newer artists draw with much lighter colors because they're more afraid to use shadows and contours and all that kind of stuff. So just try to use a darker color than you usually would for the skin. Um, when I put it down, it looks as if it's going to be so dark, but in the end, it looks fine. You can lighten it as you go. So I try to add all the base values at the stage, so all of the values are basically where I want them to be in the final painting. And the only thing I do when I'm actually painting is just refining and uh, blending the edges of the you know, values and contours and all that. But I purposefully avoid adding highlights, since a lot of times for me they're sharper, and I would always go back and blend them into the image and... Um, by doing that, I'd lose the highlights and I would keep adding them. And so I keep adding lighter and lighter values and then blow out the image and make it look ill. So I try to stay away from adding highlights until basically the end. 
And so finally, after all of that is done, I can begin actually painting on the third layer. And so the brush that I use for painting is the Bristles Harry brush with the pressure size turned off. Um, this brush blends well when applying soft pressure, but it creates really nice painterly textures when I'm using harder pressure. So that's why I really like this and I've been using it for a really long time. By the way, all the brushes that I'm using, if you watch my brushes video, there's going to be links to where you can download them. So about blending, I think the trick to smoothing out an area is first color picking and then having it be second nature. I'm showing you on the screen what shortcuts I'm using as I'm painting just so you can see how much I use the control key, which is the color picker by the way. You can see I constantly use that and um, I have my finger on that all the time. So I always use the color picker. And the next thing that I do is I use very light pressure when I'm blending and I use circular motions to do so. And so when I'm painting, it's kind of like light circular motion, color pick, light circular motion, color pick, you know, light circle, color pick, light circle. And that's kind of how I work. Just like one little light circle, I color pick, that kind of thing. So it, by working with light pressure and like circular motion, it blends everything out really well and it works for me. I try to only like blend edges between values and I don't always fixate on having them be perfectly smooth and blended. Um, I like some brush texture in there because it makes it more interesting. So don't really worry about it having to be perfectly blended like every single thing. I personally like it to be a little bit more sketchy. If it's not a personal preference for you, if you like to be very smooth, then of course you can keep working at it. But with my style, I do like some of the added texture. So if you do like that as well, don't worry about making it be super, super blended. Um, when I'm blending skin, I use light pressure and circular motions, especially on the fleshy parts of the face, such as like the cheeks, the chin, and the lips. And when I'm blending around eyes, I make sure to have soft edges combined with hard edges. So an important part to blending is to know when to do so and when to leave some texture and sharpness in the image. So I'm going to use a couple of examples of how I mix the two. I usually don't accentuate the waterline around the eye. I just let it blend into the eye and like the skin underneath it but i'll usually use a small bright sharper highlight on where the waterline would be to just show it's wet and it kind of gives you a suggestion of a waterline without being uh, a lot of detail or very sharp you know edges or lines or any of that same with the eyes i don't completely make a hard edge between the iris and the white of the eyes because if you look at the eye closely you'll see that the edge of the iris isn't like completely sharp and doesn't have a huge you know edge it usually blends in a little bit with the white of the eyes. So what I do is usually I let it blend a tiny bit and then I add a highlight right on that edge to just kind of um, give another suggestion, you know, and accentuate the fact that there's an edge even though I didn't completely draw a very sharp line right there. It's kind of like mixing the blending, you know, between the iris and the white of the eye with the sharper edge of the highlight and it kind of just creates an interesting texture. Also a little tip I have is when adding highlights, I like to use the diversity of values. So for example, um, the brightest highlights will always be on the eyes since, you know, obviously they're wet and sometimes on the lips because I like to make them glossy. I think it looks cute, but I like to use different values for the highlights. For example, on the cheekbones, I don't add a lot of highlights unless I want it to look super dewy or magical um, or like there's a lot of highlighter but I use just a variety of values for the highlights. I try to keep the lightest only on the eyes and sometimes on the lips. Also, bonier areas of the face, such as the forehead, the cheeks, and the nose, they can be a little bit more textured since there are more hard, defined edges there naturally. But of course, keep in mind what mood or character you want to portray. So for example, you can blend the nose a lot more for a childish and like soft look, and you can leave a couple more defined edges and lines on it if you want it to have more personality or if you're painting like a male or an older individual. So a good thing to do when considering where to keep things blended on the face and where to keep them rough is to just look at the facial structures of different people and assess where there are soft fleshy parts and where there's more bony defined parts and then you can exaggerate by blending or adding brush stroke textures. Um, the next area I want to address is blending around edges like the chin and the nose. So if you use the airbrush for this sketch, it's going to make it a lot easier to give a good blended feel. So you can just work with that. The chin is honestly, for me, the hardest part to blend and draw and, you know, shade and all that. But with the airbrush, it's just easier for me to blend everything in. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is blending in the hairline and the eyebrows. And so doing that, you just have to understand the direction that the hair is going towards and so where it begins. And where it begins, such as the hairline and the root of the hair, make sure that there's a little bit of a softer edge where it starts growing and um, make it darker, you know, obviously, as the hair flows. But for where the hair begins, 
you might want to blend it a little bit with the skin, you know, the forehead, that kind of thing. Same goes with the eyebrows. So with the eyebrows, naturally the inner corner is going to be a lot softer and there's not going to be as much hair since kind of all the hair, it doesn't start from there, obviously, but the direction from which the hair moves, it starts from the inner corner and goes outward. And so the more hair that starts growing as you go outward, the thicker your eyebrows will be, you know, in right at the inner corner. It's not going to be that dark and a lot of makeup artists um, will make the inner corner like a box like a really really dark box and that's not very realistic and so I would just suggest starting off with lighter um, inner corners and getting darker towards the temples uh, and the last thing I want to say is that when you're blending with rougher brushes just to make sure that you have the pressure opacity and color picker uh, to use those two but other than that you know just experiment and work with different textures I mean to me the basics of blending with digital paintings is just to use the color picker, light pressure, and the circular brush strokes, and just repeat all of those continuously, and that's how you can blend well. I'm mean, The other stuff are just like little tips uh, about blending the face and all that. So yeah, those were all my tips on blending. It's not really rocket science, it's just trial and error and the color picking and the light pressure. I think it's super important. But yeah, if you like this video, please um, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos, please subscribe because I put them out every single Sunday. And also be sure to check out the description for any links to resources and the two month premium membership code for Skillshare if you want to check out the classes, which I highly recommend. I will talk to you guys next week. Bye!